Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. So, I got home from Costco today and I stopped to unload some flower bulbs I bought and naturally got distracted in the greenhouse and ended up calling Maya out here. So we started, we started working in here and um, I realized, oh, I should probably be videoing this. Ran in to get my camera. We're currently just doing the really minor odds and ends little things. I was cleaning some stuff out of here. I'm gonna clean a little bit more stuff out of here. We're hanging up baskets and getting ready for seed starting. I spent a significant amount of time the other day, like I stayed up really late, playing around with my garden planning pro program and really getting my head around like how many plants I need to actually start for my spaces and now it's time to do that so i'm super pumped to kind of reset the space it really wasn't in bad shape my had cleaned a lot of things up whenever he was in here building the table but right now he's actually setting up these little regulator things we have for the fans <laughs> he just realized that you can put it on an app on the phone so he's setting that up i can control it on my phone that's kind of nifty i've been sitting here just doing it manually for two years because technology is not really my strong suit <laughs> What do you think for this hook, like right here, so I can hang my aprons on it? Yeah, I think that's good. I need to get a, actually I may swap one of these smaller Phillips head screws with the other ones, because the other one is too fat. Oh. Won't fit on it. I was actually just noting that there's a ton of dandelions blooming right behind the greenhouse. As you can see, one of the things I just did was I fed some of the pumpkins that were out here to my cows and they were very happy about it. Before I go in, I'm gonna pluck those dandelions. A couple days ago, I sent my kids out to pick dandelions for me. So they picked me a lot of dandelions. Um, I've, I've gotta get some more to add to it to make my jelly, cause I didn't get enough. They ran out of light. I sent them out like 10 minutes before the sunset. Uh, anyway, so what are you doing now, Maya? I'm working on this chain hanger. A chain hanger? Yeah. My mind goes to some kind of like fantasy dungeon where it's like you hang your enemies up on the chain, but you're gonna hang cute baskets. <laughs> oh my goodness. So Maya was trying to figure out a way to store my odds and ends baskets, which are all different sizes. And he had the idea of hanging a chain up and he ordered, and then he ordered these hooks to like put on the chain to hang the baskets on. So I thought that was really clever. There we go. We were trying to figure out where to put it to keep it primarily out of the way. Yeah, I think that's fun. Huh? I think that's fun. It's gonna be right in front of the thermostat, but since I've got that on my phone, it mostly doesn't matter. I did move this thing. I'm gonna hang it up over here on the other side, which is actually good because right now I've got those thermostats telling me what the temperature is on that side of the greenhouse. So I'm thinking if I put this back on the other side, it'll be good. So you're just pinching that out. Uh, you want me to just start throwing hooks up? Yeah. Yeah, we'll just, have to you know, just throw it together. Huh? It's a willy-nilly. Some of my baskets have seen much better days. <laughs> so. I'm definitely in the Hunger Games out here. Uh, these are actually some of the most used baskets we have are these that I get from the strawberry place and save. I think I pay an extra dollar for it to be able to keep the basket rather than then pump it into a bag. Uh, Can you reach it down? This is technically an egg basket. Yeah. I like it in the garden too. This doesn't have to be my bag. Actually, this one I probably use as a waste bin out here. Asher, you wanna say hi? Such a great guy. <laughs> oh, here comes Jackson. It's so nice to have strong young sons to help carry heavy things. Thank you, sir. Maya, that was a great idea. <laughs> it looks good. 
All right, I'm not being a very good vlogger right now. I just did some stuff without the camera on. Um, I laid out some trays. I got some new bootstrap farmer stuff. Of course I have like all my old things. I actually have more. That little trailer right now is my current working garden shed. It is unfortunately a nightmare of a mess, much like the inside of my brain sometimes uh, during the off season. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to tackle that. It's actually raining a little bit outside, so I'm not gonna do it right now. But um, I think what I may do tomorrow, no, tomorrow's raining too. Uh, the next day when it's not raining, I've got this trough. I think I'm gonna fill it up, not deep, but <coughs> fill it with a little bit of water and uh, put some dish soap in it and take all of my pots from last year and just put them all in there and that way I can kind of wash them around and then rinse them off to just give them a good clean. I don't worry too much about disinfecting things from the previous year. Technically you should. I usually just make sure that they're somewhat washed off. I don't try to like sanitize anything necessarily. I typically just use some soapy water, give them a dunk, scrub them if need be uh, gently and then rinse them off. And so I'm gonna do that. Um, I got a little bit of new stuff from Bootstrap Farmer. It's not, I wasn't trying to like fully replace everything, but every year I start in Bootstrap Farmer cups and I end up giving them away to people. So I was, you know, just kind of a little lower on my numbers. But really these things are, they're, they're pretty expensive for giving away or selling. Really the way you justify spending extra on them is by using them year after year, but you know, I end up sharing with people. I did get some real big ones they have this year. Check that out. Um, these, again, like some of the pots and things I have down here, I've been growing in them for five years, so they last a long time. But I thought that these big pots would be kind of cool for starting bare root plants. Um, and then also for potentially trying to overwinter some peppers for starting things real early and then letting them grow out here longer. I don't know. I also didn't anticipate them being quite this big. This is really big, but we'll find a use. And then they have these new medium ones. So this is what I usually use. And then these are the new medium size ones, which I was thinking that these would be cool for some tomatoes. Um, in the past, I have used red solo cups for tomatoes, which I still like. The thing with red solo cups is, is if you're starting a whole bunch, you're, you're using more soil. These are kind of more along the size of that. But these of course are heavier plastics. They're not gonna break down as fast. Um, the thing with the red solo cups when you have a whole lot of them, like moving them around is difficult. They have a tendency to kind of fall over. So I have m primarily moved to using the bootstrap farmer things, the trays and the cups because it's just easier to move whole trays of things. It's just more maneuverable. Oh, I actually have red solo cups. See, these are kind of more the right size. So, um, I like this though, because you could get these trays to put them in. See, these go on the bootstrap farmer trays to hold them. So you could move a whole tray of them. And I mean, obviously they cost more, but my thought is, is that if I use them over the case of like four growing seasons, five growing seasons, it really does kind of mediate the price a little bit. I actually prefer this size for starting tomatoes. It just costs more because you have to spend more soil um, on the front end. You have to buy more potting soil, which I just, I don't buy like seed starting mix. I just do potting soil because it's a lot cheaper. Um, but I feel like you get stronger plants with stronger root systems. Now I've moved over to the two and a half inch cups because for size, ease, and cost, I feel like they work, but I've, I was thinking about it recently. I was thinking about how big my tomato plants used to be when it came time to move them out. And the only difference is, is that I'm using smaller cups now. So I don't know. If you know that you're gonna be able to put your tomatoes out at six weeks, like it's fine. But I tend to err a little bit on the earlier side. And then if we get a late frost, then sometimes mine are eight or nine weeks before they're being put out. So obviously they're just running out of space. Oh look, Maya went and got some other chairs. Nice. I'm probably gonna wait a little bit longer just because we have a couple freezing days this week. I'm gonna put heat mats out here for starting peppers. Are you sure you don't wanna just paint these? Oh, I'm not opposed to painting them. They would probably last longer. Because they got some tomato vibes going on here. <laughs> they're not, like they don't rust, they don't get rust on your clothes. Hmm. So, I mean, so they're cool. worn down rust. <laughs> but yeah, we could, 
We could paint them. Then we could do like Mimi does next door and distress it a little. So you can paint it white, <laughs> paint it black. No, you paint it black first. Paint it black. Paint it black, then paint it white, then distress it. <laughs> <laughs> One time Jeremiah went next door to Papa T and Mimi's. She has her whole little craft shop. That She does really cool stuff. She is so crafty and so good at decorating. But she was telling him all these different things. And she was like, yeah, you paint it black, then you paint it white, then you distress it. And he was like, what about this? She was like, yeah, paint it black, paint it white, then distress it. And she didn't realize he was just trying to get her to say the same thing over and over. Because <laughs> she's just so cute. <laughs> she has a long list of things that are... Paint it black, paint it, black, paint paint it white, white, and distress it. <laughs> I probably wouldn't paint these black and then white, but they could use, they could probably use a little, little pick me up. I gotta go put hay out. Is that why they're hollering? Yeah. So needy. <laughs> Thank you for your help, sir. No problem. Thanks for the greenhouse. <laughs> no. Every time I put hay out, I always feel like Napoleon Dynamite. Eat your food, Eat your food, Tina. <laughs> The cows were all sitting back here just hollering at me and I threw them a couple of pumpkins that were getting a little on the overripe side that have been out here stored. They have a little bit of hay left. You know, we always try to push it when we put the hay bale out that they, so if you put a fresh one out, they'll just leave whatever's there. Then it gets rained on and trampled on. So we try to like give them one morning when it's just the end of the hay bale to like be like, no, really, you want to eat that? And they they were eating it. And then they saw Jeremiah come out here with me. And they came to the fence and have just yelled incessantly because they're like, hey. <laughs> Literally, that's what I think they're saying. Oh, I lost my train of thought. I'm going to wait just a few more days. But I actually, I actually have some house plants inside that I'm going to bring out here and hang on this back pipe. Um, I won't necessarily leave them out here. I mean, once it starts getting hot, I'll just bring them back in the house. But I was thinking about it. And as I was just tidying everything up and unpacking things and organizing and pulling some seeds out, I went by my office and got some of the seeds that I had there. And I'm like gearing up and getting ready to go to like full bore fill this place up. And I was like, I should hang house plants. <laughs> I should fully make it cozy because I'm going to spend a lot of time out here in the next two months. And actually I had this idea, this image in my mind of like all the started plants on all the shelves, filling this up and having all my chairs. I have more chairs. I got a good amount of storage, but um, filling, putting all my chairs around the table and like having a meal in here, maybe hosting a little something. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Just a dream to sit here at this table surrounded by plants and have have breakfast or brunch. I actually need to go inside right now and cook, but I don't want to. <laughs> I was like, I have to actually really regulate myself during this time of year because this is what I'm most excited about doing. So I have a tendency of just like, this is all I want to do and I have to make myself go do the other things I have responsibility for. Real life responsibility that takes away from seed starting time. So pesky. So it's the next day and it's pouring down rain as you can probably hear. It's very loud in here as the rain hits the roof. And this is one of those vlogs that kind of spanned over a few days. I tend to get out of the groove of like regularly filming things when I get ahead. So like I filmed a couple of videos last week in my office. So I didn't film anything to speak up for a few days. And so yeah, I'm just gonna piece this together and I'll catch up with you guys later this week. We'll be starting some seeds. It's time. I'm going through a bunch of seeds over here, pulling out what I've had previously, trying to make sense of that chaos, and then uh, the new seeds that I've got in since last season. Kind of working through all of that and getting ready to start a plant, enjoying the sound of the rain on the roof. Thank you guys for hanging out with me all of the days of this video and all the days you do. I bless you. Until next time.